We'll say, inshallah, a few invocations uh, in English as well for those uh, who don't know the Arabic, inshallah, because we are as strong as our weakest link, my dear beloved brothers and sisters. And this is something that we must understand as a community, inshallah. And if we are able to strengthen our weakest link, we will be unstoppable together, inshallah. So before we get into some of the uh, reasons of why do we play, uh, pray Salat al-Khusuf, again, we have a, a newcomer here with us, inshallah, who will be taking his shahada. And we always want to make the best of impressions on our dear brothers and sisters who come into the fold of Islam. And coming into a masjid or a musalla for the first time, we want to make it the best time for them, inshallah, God willing. We don't want to stir any confusion or cause any malice within the community, nothing but love, inshallah ta'ala. So we'll say some of the invocations again in English, just to show how we supplicate ourselves to Allah, azza wa jal, and then inshallah, we'll have our talk. So when we, we recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, we say in the name of God, the most compassionate, the ever merciful. Allah commands us, God commands us to say He is God, the one, God, the eternally besought. He begot no one, nor was He begotten, and no one is comparable unto Him. Allah also tells us, He says, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the ever merciful, say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the people, the King of the people, the God of the people against the harm of the slinking whisperer who whispers into the hearts of people, whether they be jinn or people, meaning mankind. Forgive me, I'll, I uh, skip uh, Surah Al-Fanaw. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the ever merciful say, I take refuge with the Lord of daybreak against the harm and what he has created. The harm in the night when the darkness gathers, the harm in witches when they blow on knots, and the harm of the envier when he envies. O oh Allah, we take refuge in you from the goadings of the Satans, and we seek refuge with you, O oh Lord so that they may not come near us. Allah tells us in His glorious Qur'an, without the Arabic right now, He says, Did you think we had created you in vain, human being, and that you would not be brought back to us? Exalted be God, the true King, there is no God but Him, the Lord of the glorious throne. Whoever prays to another God alongside Him, He has no proof of this. His face, he will face his reckoning with his Lord on Yom Qiyamah, the day of standing when we return back to Allah. So those who reject the truth, they will not prosper. Say, Lord, forgive and have mercy. You are the most merciful of those who show mercy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Ajma'in. So today, dear brothers and sisters, we read Surah Al-Naba, which is the Surah Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to us in Juz Amma. And then within the within Juz Amma, the specific part of the Quran, Allah gives us the account of things that will happen on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Yawm Al-Qiyamah meaning the day of standing. And it is, a, it is a ni'mah, a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal for you and I to be able to witness such a spectacle of what is going on right now and to be able to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal as a community. Masha, thank you. As a community, as we get to reflect, and we should be able to stand as if we are standing on that very day. We are in the blessed month of Ramadan as well, and look at these signs that Allah Azza wa Jal has shown you and I.
It is said that the end was near once the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was initiated. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So if we take a moment to ponder and to reflect on what is time actually, as Allah swears by time, وَالْعَصِرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ What is time in reality? When the angel Israfil, his lips, just as my lips are close to this microphone, his lips are puckered, cheeks full of air, and he's getting ready to blow the horn. And this horn will be one of the most egregious sounds that humankind will, will ever hear. And so reflecting on these verses of Allah Azza wa Jal, before we get into Surah al Naba, the news. The news is concerning the day of judgment. Allah has placed you and I here on this earth solely to worship Him. And to worship Him in every single act it is that we can possibly do. Whether it be raising our children, whether it be going to work, it can even be so much so as playing basketball as long as you say Bismillah before you start that thing. And surely within the remembrance of Allah in anything that you do, you will obtain taqwa, which is consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah gives us an opportunity with having life, life in order to obtain this taqwa, this taqwa meaning God consciousness, reverence of Him. And so all of the tests and trials that we face in our lives always points us to have remembrance of Allah so that we stand firm. So when the day of judgment comes regarding our responsibilities, we'll be able to pay forth a proper response. What is it to be responsible? Think about it. It means that you have to be able to provide a sufficient response. Dear believers, the time that we have with the eclipse going on, there were times in Jahaliyyah during the times of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Our messenger has told us that when the moon eclipses the sun, these are signs of Allah as Allah has created the sun and the moon to give you and us signs. They're signs of Allah to show us so that we can calculate time and so that we can fare and use our time to our advantage in this life before we return to Him. And in his, in his ayat, inside of his glorious Qur'an, Allah mentions these things specifically by name. Ashams wal qamar When we ponder on the reflect on the creation of Allah, and also we ponder on Allah's signs inside of his glorious Qur'an, we come to know and understand what is our purpose here as human beings and how can we prepare ourselves for Yawm Al-Qiyamah, that standing that we must be able to provide a proper response to our Lord Azza wa Jal. As Allah knows every single thing it is that you and I do as He's closer to us than our jugular vein. The day of standing where absolutely there will be no power awarded to anyone except that which Allah is will, that which Allah wills. The way that I'm able to speak right now to you and to articulate myself, I will absolutely not have this control, nor will you on Yom al -Qiyam. The way that I'm able to move my hands, control my breath, my thoughts, this will not be our states on Yom al -Qiyam. If we don't look at these signs that Allah Azza wa Jalla has given us and correct ourselves 
in this time that we have here on this earth. If we also reflect upon we're inside of this blessed month of Ramadan and this eclipse has happened. These signs are extremely close. If we think about the birth of the Prophet Muhammad over more than 1,400 years ago, the angel's lips are puckered and more close to blowing on the horn than my lips are to this microphone right now. So what have you and I prepared regarding our response to Allah Azza wa Jal on Yom al -Qiyamah? May Allah accept our time during this Ramadan that we be forgiven of our sins and our wrongdoings. We are near the end of Ramadan of this very blessed month. And we must warn ourselves through reflecting on these warnings that Allah sends to us. And so why do we play, pray Salatul Khusuf? It is said that when the moon eclipsed the sun, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came out of his house extremely nervous. And he scurried to the masjid. And he gathered the people and they saw how nervous he was. This is the messenger of Allah. The one who we follow, the most beloved of God. And look at his state. He was extremely concerned. He revealed to his companions that during this time when the sun, when the when the moon eclipses the sun, it is a huge sign from Allah Azza wa Jal that potentially fitna can befall upon a community. So he gathered the community and he said, for us to do the things that most pleases Allah during this moment, so a calamity does not fall upon us. He also said to give much in charity after doing ibadah, meaning standing and worship, worshiping Allah, to give in charity, to seek forgiveness of Allah during this time. To be kind to those who are around you. If this was the state of our beloved messenger Muhammad وسلم, who was the most pristine human being to ever touch this earth, what about you and I? Who was the most prepared to stand before Allah? Who is the most prepared to stand before Allah on Yom al -Qiyamah? If he had this much worry inside of his heart, how should you and I be when we see the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal? As we read in our second rakah, Yasalunaka anis sa'ati ayyana mursaha. Allah has revealed inside of His glorious Quran, they ask you, O oh Muhammad, they ask you about the last hour. Huh? Let us think about that. We were discussing last night, what if it is that we, we had our book and we knew when our last hour was on this earth? What would our states be? How would we use our time if we knew our full schedule the day that we will go and return back to Allah Azza wa Jal? They ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the last and final hour. Fima anta min dhikraha. This is the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and Allah tells him, "O oh Muhammad, you are not in position to know that information. No one knows the hour except Allah, and Allah has given us signs in order to know when that hour is coming and approaching, and when that hour is near." Until your Lord is a lofty return and a lofty station to return. Oh Muhammad, you are solely the ambassador or the leader of those who want to take heed of your message, meaning this glorious Quran that Allah is, uh, has given us to recite. That is you and I who are here right now 
trying to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, meaning his lifestyle and trying to implement the words of Allah Azza wa Jal كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ دُحَاهَا Allah tells us many times inside of His glorious Qur'an that this world is nothing but mere play. And we will come to realize that, or those who are unfortunate will come to realize that on the day of Yawm al on the day of standing before Allah. They will say, it's only as if we were in it for a day and a night. So what is time in its true essence? And how do we actually use our time for our benefit to make sure that we provide a proper response when we stand before our Lord Azza wa Jal? Allah also tells us about the horrors on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. نَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ سَلَامًا وَعَافِيَةً We ask Allah for His protection that we do not have to stand before Him and take any reckoning and have to be accountable for that which we have accounted in our lives. So let us take advantage and be grateful about this time that we have together right now and this month that we're in because we are in pristine condition to be fully forgiven for what it is that we have committed. And the actions that we take now will provide the best of responses for us on Yom Al-Qiyam. And why is that? The day where you and I will not be able to even control our own breaths, nor our hands, any of our limbs. In fact, Allah tells us inside of His glorious Quran that He will make our limbs a test for us. Yet, during these months, like Ramadan, if we habituate ourselves to good actions, we will naturally respond with good. And this is one of the reasons on Yom al we won't have any control over ourselves because the limbs who are a witness to every single thing that it is that we do, let alone the angels, let alone our Lord above, knows every single thing it is that you and I have done, will do, and what it is that we think. Having these signs of Allah is nothing more than a miracle, dear believers. And it is time for you and I to do our utmost best to connect with this glorious Quran and to not waste away our time. We must be good to one another. We must be able to reflect with one another. We must be able to be guided by one another. We see the current state of our ummah and what certain agenda of people around the world are doing right now. At times it seems like the oppressors are winning in some sort. But this is all by the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, for they surely are signs just as well. Just as Fir'aun was a sign to the nation of Banu Israel. When we take this glorious Quran, Allah gives us these characters for a reason, even though when we say characters, these were true people, real people. But it is for us to take all of these analogies and to apply them directly to what is going on inside of our times as well. Any oppressor in any shape or form is Fir'aun. And truly Allah, one of the most detested acts to Allah Azza wa Jal is to oppress. Even if it be one's own self. 
So when you and I commit wrong and when we start off with ourselves first and not look at others, reflect about how is it that we oppress our own selves. Think about it. The victim can always tell you what the oppressor has done to them, correct? As we see what is going on inside of Philistine and the West Bank and the Gaza in the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, people being starved. The victim can always tell the oppressor what they have oppressed upon them. I want you to really reflect about this regarding ourselves. And if we can collectively see within our own selves, what about the victim of our limbs? Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us on Yom Al-Qiyamah Our hands will be the victims who will speak against us Our feet will be the victims who speak against us Our eyes will be the victims who speak against us Because they wouldn't want to be punished Right? As we say we, when we look at anyone inside of this life who's being oppressed, we say that is unfair, that's not right. And that's the same exact way that our body will want to respond against this soul who actually controls it. Our hands will say, oh Allah, I don't want to be burned. Remove me from this soul and put that soul inside of the fire because it wasn't me who wanted to do it, I'm the victim. The feet will say, oh Allah, I did not walk there. This soul made me do it. Do not put me inside of your fire. The eyes will say, oh Allah, I did not intend to watch that. I was the victim. I was forced to do this. We must take ourselves to account before we are taken to account. And this is the way that we should try and live every single day of our lives. And we don't want to have a seldom moment in the sense that Allah is not forgiving. Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. But we also don't want to take for granted the mercy of Allah by being disobedient purposefully by knowing that alhamdulillah this month during Ramadan I stayed away from this I stayed away from that I didn't commit this sin I didn't watch that Allah is so showing us his signs there's a day that is approaching whether we live that day in reality but the day that's most, that, that is definitely approaching is the day of our return to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a guarantee. That is something we will literally taste as Allah describes in His glorious Quran. Let us not take the mercy of Allah for granted. Although Allah is the most gracious, the most merciful, and He forgives every single sin as we are told and taught to say inside of this glorious month. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Ya Kareem. And it is accepted. But we urge ourselves with this message that we've been able to sit with one another today. Know that your Lord is the most gracious, the most merciful. Don't go back after this glorious month. May Allah accept. Do not go back to being the same person that you were. May Allah bless us with many more Ramadans that we are able to inculcate love of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a messenger of his uh, and, and love and inculcate love of his glorious Quran and these should be steps that we take going up and raising in our ranks and in our Iman and in our character 
After Ramadan, we should not start declining and going back down our steps. If you are able to behave and perform the way that you have been during this month, what do you think it is that you can't do it afterwards? We've been able to learn about who it is that we are because we know that the shayateen are locked away. So you and I have had at least nearly 30 days to find out who it is that we truly are. We can't use the shaitan as an excuse. As on the day of judgment, before he is descended into the worst of places, may Allah protect us from? Say Amin. He will say, I only called you to it. I only whispered to you. You're the one who did the action. We must use this time to fortify ourselves. And every time we strengthen our shield with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we never allow our shield to be penetrated or broken by going back to the same activities that we used to take part in. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ امْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَحَاجَرَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ حَاجَرَ لِلدُّنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةً يَنْكِحُهَا The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and we really wanted to stick to the most beginning parts of this hadith which we'll end with inshaAllah Allah tells you and I that truly all actions have intentions In every single action of a believer, if it is for the sake of Allah and His Messenger, they will be rewarded as such. Whatever it is that you strive for in life, whether it is providing for your family, whether it is trying to rid, rid, rid some disease of the heart, whether it is to stop habituating a bad act, When you remember your cause and why it is that you and I are here and it is for the sake of Allah, no matter how much we fail or we strive in achieving that thing, Allah will reward us. And the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him also tells us within this hadith, but if you go after anything inside of this life solely for that thing, without the remembrance of Allah, without intending to do that thing for Allah, well, you will solely get that thing. So what this hadith emphasizes you and I to do is that everything that we do, we intend to do it, to come nearer to Allah and to His Messenger, Azawajal. And inshallah, these are a few ways that we will be able to obtain taqwa of Allah. And we read inside of our khutbah every Friday, every single time uh, in our reminder, Allah tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, Taqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, O you who claim to live your life and submit yourself to Allah, do not die except for in that state. Do not die except for striving and trying to come to Allah and trying to remember Him. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. This has been our talk and our conclusion of it. Alhamdulillah. Wa afwan minkum. Forgive me if I have offended anyone or I have said anything wrong. 
Dear brothers and sisters, we just want to make sure that we are reminded. Allah is the most gracious, the most merciful, and He does forgive. But just the way that we are with our kids or anyone that we have a relationship with, do not abuse the kindness of your companion, meaning your Lord. Don't think that, Alhamdulillah, Ramadan may be over in three days, I can't wait to get back to. We have warnings inside of this glorious Quran. We might not have a next breath or a next day. So if we can take one message from this entire talk, that is to try and live every single day, every single moment, as if we are about to be taken to account before Allah Azza wa Jal, and we will fare much more better inside of this world if we can take that, and that is taqwa. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But we intend to also do um, a shahada, inshallah. Uh, and so before uh, we do that with our dear brother, Jared, can you come up here, please? Can you come and take a seat with us? Assalamu alaikum. So alhamdulillah, <sighs> Jared, he's come, um, he called me extremely excited. Jared, he's come, um, he called me extremely excited. So, um, our dear brother, Jared, so um, firstly, we go back uh, to high school, alhamdulillah. We went to James Logan High School in Union City. Um, I was class of 2011, so now I'm dating myself, and you are class of 2012, right? MashaAllah, and alhamdulillah, this is such a special occasion. This is a very strong young man, and as you can see, even the way that he's built, mashallah. So we used to play on the football team together as well. We played uh, varsity football together. I played wide receiver, and he played cornerback. And for those who don't know about football, the wide receiver and the cornerback, they oppose each other. They go against each other. I'm on the offensive side of the ball, and he's on the defensive side of the ball. And so, even in high school, we've been sharpening one another. Through all of our practices, through all of our grinds, lifting together, mashallah. He called me and he told me, he said, you know what? Quran, you know, um, you and your father have always inspired me since high school. Again, I'm nobody, but again, we're just brothers and I'm just sharing a moment with you guys. In high school, alhamdulillah, is when I started to like, uh, you know, Hey, there's so many religions, there's so many people, why is it Islam true? I started to really seek for my own self. I knew I was Muslim, but I didn't know why I was Muslim. I knew I was Muslim, but I didn't know why I was Muslim. So in high school, this senior year, actually what he's talking about is when uh, he said, you and your father really inspired me. And Jared, at the time, he was much more smaller than what he is. But he did everything that he could do to strive, and that shows mujahada, to strive and to struggle in the way of Allah through anything it is that we do, just things just even like football, right? Anything, you can take anything, any art in the world, and if you do it for the sake of God, there are all these microcosms that are in the same thing. You have to strive and struggle in anything it is that you do. This is the only way that how you get to Allah. And so he called me, he said, hey, yeah, man, I've been uh, fasting. I said, why have you been fasting? He said, yeah, and I've been praying. I said, what? I said, uh, did somebody show you? Like, did you go to any mosque or anything? He said, nah, man, I didn't, I didn't do none of that. I just, like, I, I just know that to be the truth. So I don't know who it is that he's seen actually in his life. It's, it's Allah is the one who guides hearts. And alhamdulillah, inshallah, we'll be inviting our brother into the fold of Islam. And Dara, we just want you to know some things before taking what is called your shahada, as you've already been practicing as a Muslim and what we spoke to you about. But now we say the shahada in front of the community, so we recognize one another.
And that you know that you are in the brotherhood of eternity. This, this life is only temporal and we will be with, the, with one another in the afterlife, God willing. Inside of, the, inside of paradise, inside the highest levels of paradise with our glorious messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Well, we don't ever have to worry about sickness. Well, we don't ever have to worry about work. Well, we don't ever have to worry about overcoming anything. There will be nothing but pure bliss. But in this world, we work with one another in order to get through this hardship. Is there anything that you would just like to share about yourself and how you, uh, you know, what, what was it that, is there anything that you would just like to share in general before we tell you what the Shahada is, we'll say it in Arabic and then we'll say it in English afterwards. How's it going? Uh, Jared Mendoza. Uh, I am a, a deputy sheriff uh, for Alameda County. Um, thank you for having me here, uh, ready to learn, uh, to be a part of this community. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, looking for some peace. So Can you just tell you. us a little bit, how did you come to, like, how did you come to know that Islam is the truth? Uh, it, it kind of found me. Uh, I was looking for some, some guidance. Um, I come from a, uh, a father who teaches a, a Muslim art, a Filipino martial arts uh, that is called Kali, uh, that is uh, taught by the, the Muslims in the Philippines. Uh, so I grew up uh, training in that martial arts. Uh, so I've always had a natural affinity towards uh, Islam, so to, so to speak. Uh, also, uh, when I was looking for some guidance, uh, I was never a social media person, and I hopped on social media for other purposes. And Quran popped up as people you may know out of nowhere. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was a, it was a sign. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we'll say what the shahada is. So we'll say the Arabic first, which is always best to do, and then we'll explain it in English, okay? Say, ash, let's hold up our right finger, our right index finger. Say, Ashhadu. And we all should reaffirm our faith right now, just as well together with our brother as well. Say, Ashhadu. Allah. Ilaha. Illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Marhaban alhamdulillahi rabbin alameen. So we, we just said, I bear witness, say this in English, I bear witness that there is no God but God. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger and servant. Takbir, takbir, takbir. And saying takbir means tell the crowd to say Allahu Akbar. And so Allahu Akbar means God is the greatest, which Allah is the greatest, alhamdulillah. Welcome to the fold, marhaban. Everybody, let's uh, introduce ourselves to our brother Jared, alhamdulillah.